Hello guys, here we are again, back in my house, back in North London. And on Monday the boys start back at pre-season training. Um, I haven't done one of these videos for a while, probably a month or so now. And uh, I hope you've missed them. I've missed them, doing them a little bit. What have I been up to? I've been watching the World Cup. Uh, and I've been really enjoying it. What a group stage. I can't remember a more dramatic, a more exciting group stage in my lifetime. But anyway, over the next few weeks, as pre-season preparations begin to ramp up, um, you're going to be seeing more of these videos. So if you like them, that's a good thing. And if you don't, why are you watching this? It's a beautiful day. Get outside. The news uh, that's brought me back, it's interesting because there's been a lot going on, and yet the thing that's brought me back is a relatively mundane story. It's come from David Ornstein at the BBC. And he reported this afternoon that Callum Chambers uh, is going to be signing a new four-year contract with Arsenal. Now, the reason that that was so interesting to me, I'm just looking, double-checking the, the facts of it now, uh, is that he only signed a two-year extension in October 2017. That tied him down to 2021, but they've decided to tie him down to a new contract, put an extra year on that. That is a significant show of faith in Chambers from the new regime. And it's interesting that a year ago, 12 months ago, he was potentially, you know, on the verge of being sold. Uh, there was talk of Crystal Palace coming in for him, of other clubs potentially looking at him, a £20 million pound fee, £15 million pound fee. And it seemed the club were relatively content with the idea of letting him go. Rob Holding, of course, had emerged at the back end of that, uh, that previous season, played in the FA Cup final, where Chambers had been relegated with Middlesbrough, and it felt like maybe his Arsenal career was coming to a close. That began to shift a little bit, I think, in the back end of last season. And one of Arsene Wenger's parting gifts, really, to the club was that he gave Chambers a lot of game time. In the second half of last season, he gave him an opportunity to stake his claim for a place. Now, I can only imagine that one of two things has happened. The first possibility is that Unai Emery uh, has been reviewing the footage from last season. We know he's into his videos. We know he's into his tapes. And he's been sufficiently impressed by Chambers that he's thought... This is a guy we need to keep around. Or maybe the decision has been made in conjunction with, with Raul Sanyehi and uh, Sven Mislintat, the other members of our kind of technical team. Maybe they've made an assessment on Chambers and thought, this is an asset we need to tie down. It does make sense from a purely business perspective that Arsenal are at risk of failing to meet the homegrown quota next year. We don't have a bunch of homegrown players anymore. We all know about Jack Wilshire going. We all know about Theo Walcott going in January. Alex sort of like Chamberlain a few months before that. So we've lost a good British contingent. Uh, and we know that they're good investments. We know that they generally uh, return a decent amount on the transfer market. One, you'd only look at that Walcott deal, for example. And the, and the Chamberlain won 40 million quid. I mean, I know he's had a good season, but it was still very... Very good deal at the time. So Chambers, you know, it's it's relatively low risk. I don't imagine his wages are exorbitant. But if someone wants to get him out of the club, we now will make a substantial chunk of cash. And he adds to our centre-back contingent for next season. So what have we got? Well, we know we've got Socrates, Papastopoulos. I can't do it. I tried so hard. Socrates, Papastopoulos. Yes. We know we've got him coming in. It's a matter of time. The deal's all done, it's agreed. It could be announced in the next couple of days, possibly Monday, apparently. Then, as well as that, we have got Callum Chambers. Seems like he's not going anywhere. Uh, Laurent Koscielny, OK, I don't think you can count Laurent Koscielny because of his injury. We don't know when he'll be back. We don't know what kind of shape he'll be back in. So then you're looking at Mustafi, and you're looking at uh, Rob Holding, and then you're looking at Konstantinos Mavropanos. That's five. Uh, I think... It's possible we'll add one more. And I wonder if the fact that Chambers is being kept on, because you can't see Mavro Panos going anywhere, and to be honest, I can't really see Holding going anywhere either, suggests that one may be going out. Uh, and you do wonder if that might be Mustafi. It just feels like there's money to be made on him. He was pretty much disastrous last season, uh, and it seems like there might be a chance to recoup some cash there. The one thing that might work against that is we've brought in a German goalkeeper in Bernd Leno. Will we want to keep the German centre-half to play in front of him? They, they know each other very well. They're friends as well. I know you don't keep someone as a friend, but it might help them settle, might uh, be part of his understanding. We have had a little German hub within the squad, and with Ozil on that contract, looks like that's going to remain. Is Mustafi part of that? Is he part of those plans? 
I don't know. We've got a lot of centre halves, and they still talk about Chalar Soyuncu. That's the closest I can get for his pronunciation. The Freiburg defender, the Turkish lad. It doesn't quite add up. It sounds like someone's on the way out. Rob Holding got a contract at the end of last season, so it can't really be him. Maybe he'll be loaned out. Maybe Mavro Panos will be loaned out. Interesting area of the squad because we've got numbers, but we don't have a definitive first choice setup pairing, and it's not clear. So uh, interesting to keep an eye on that over the next few weeks. I mentioned Bert Leno there. He's someone I'll be talking about in the videos over the next couple of days. Um, also going to talk about the other new signing, uh, Lick Steiner. Uh, maybe Socrates as well. So yeah, stay tuned. We'll see what we've got for you. I'm actually off to Turkey tomorrow. Uh, I'll be there just in time for Jack Wilshire's unveiling, <laughs> potentially, as a Fenerbahce player. I'll speak to you about Jack leaving the club too at some point. But anyway, uh, good to be back. And uh, if you have missed me, maybe absence has made the heart grow fonder, subscribe. And then you'll be the first to know when a new video comes out. Cheers, guys. I'm very excited for the new season. Uh, roll on 2018-19.